Oh, <laughs> it's another one of those videos. What you're looking at is the one spectacular best ever new growth of my now confirmed Lelia Kaltskiana. That would be the one to the left, standing bolt upright, perfection, just in case it wasn't obvious. And the tippy tops of the little leaves on the right is my Lelia rupestris. Both arrived in my collection in 2019. This is what I've got to show for. I will get into more detail on both of them and how they progressed or not progressed since 2019. As much as I could keep them in these recycled pots, let's put it that way, what I don't want to have happen is in the next two or three years have to disturb them because both of them are so shy on growing roots. And in my opinion, both of them are now in media that is far too wet. <laughs> so many little adjustments we have to make with these two. The sooner I get in, the better, so as not to jeopardize the precious new root growth. Oh my goodness, and I hope that one of them is going to prove me wrong when it comes to being stingy on the root growth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of ready-ish, <laughs> just a little bit nervous as always when it comes to disturbing rapiculous lelias that are not exactly very strong and have not been all these years. I hope you join me, see you on the other side of the intro. In the meantime, would you already give this video a like? That would be so appreciated. I'm so glad that I can get into this before we get into colder temperatures. This is actually wonderful. It's just the outcome I'm a little bit concerned about. So what we're going to do is start with my Kautskiana, now confirmed, because the size of the growth matches the one that I got from Anonymous that is absolutely huge. And this is my Kautskiana, and when you look at them next to each other, it's like... A who are you? You could be correct, you could be correct, but your size doesn't convince me. Anyway, now we know it's a Kautskiana. I've got two cartwheels around the patio. Anywho, I want to get her out of anything that has to do with Ceramis very carefully. So let's go. There's only one way to do this. Squeeze gently at the base and breathe. Breathing is good. <laughs> Don't want to be in any way, shape or form dizzy and faint. I like that she's not just falling out of the pot. That's good news, but I don't want to pull. <laughs> and I'm not holding on to the new growth. I'm holding on to the back. Oh, la 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 la, the excitement. <laughs> Nurse, please. I need somebody to dab my brow. Okay, it's looking okay. Let me pull you out. It's looking wonderful. You see, that is too wet now. Too wet after my very high humidity summer. That is far too wet. I can supplement with water, but what I cannot do is take out water. <laughs> so we are going to go into lava rock only. And oh, this is awesome. This is better than expected. Very happy. I kind of was hoping to see this because I could see the vigor of the root system of the one that was gifted to me by Anonymous. But you know, you never know. <laughs> so we have an opportunity for a little bit of a cleanup. Not going to go too mad. Just because we see it doesn't mean we need to always address it. But what's so easy to get to without messing around too much, we can deal with that. She has been so slow out of the gates, incredibly slow. Whereas the one that I got from Anonymous, she arrived on the patio, went into self-watering, has taken off and has bloomed for the first time this year. Beautiful blooms. Oh, so I'm not complaining that I have two. Very, very pleased to have two. I'm greedy like that. What I also want to try and do is get rid of as much of the ceramics without being too pedantic about it, you know? Just that that's the whole point of this exercise is yes, a bigger pot and then no disturbance for the next five, six, seven years, depending. Hoping that nothing comes in the way that we don't, you know, we need to intervene. That's the plan. Just leave her in a bigger pot to do her thing. And do her thing she will. Woo! So happy. Okay. This one is attached. We're going to get her new pot and fresh, big lava rock. 
And just in case I have to fill with water, I have duct taped the drainage holes. First of all, I had a support in her older pot because she came with literally no roots. I don't think I need a support for her this time. Isn't that gonna look awesome? Yes, and we are going to fill with water so that the lava rock doesn't go down bashing onto the roots. You're probably wondering why I am not going to miss down the roots to clean up the rhizome, etc. She is not that strong of an orchid and I don't want to push my luck. That was the easy part. <laughs> And now it's me holding the orchid and getting lava rock around the roots, possibly one piece at a time. Starting with the tips that I can see, just positioning the lava rock where I can see them. And then we're just going to build up around her. It's a labor of love, but wow, the fact that she's come around like this, ooh, we gotta honor that, we gotta protect it, we've gotta keep the momentum going. I want to change the camera angle for you. <laughs> there we go. What I'm doing is building up around the roots, getting the larger pieces in, so that they are protecting anything I will build up on the top from the weight. Just the larger pieces in and around, like Tetris, but with orchids and roots and lava rock. Ooh, great piece for under the base. Look, no hands. And you know what? I was so eager to get into this project, I wasn't thinking of where my drainage holes were. And of course, I would rather position the pot in such a way that I don't see the drainage holes, but it depends on the direction of growth, where the light is coming from. So my drainage holes are here on this side. The orchid is growing in this direction. If the light source is here, I'm gonna see the drainage holes. So it's not something that I can aesthetically control. It depends on where the orchid is moved to, depending also on the time of year. Before I go any further, her tag is going back in by the drainage holes because I can still see roots. So I'm not going to be messing around there. Let's secure that tag with a rock. Don't let it slip. There we go. No jiggling. The whole point of this exercise is to be as careful as possible, as diligent as possible, slow, but fast and effective, you know? All these criteria. So far, so good. Let's see what Repestris has in store for us. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she also already has a root system that I couldn't discern? There's other shenanigans going on with the Repestris, which are a concern and have been for years. I am so happy she is still around. I'm getting ahead of myself. Talking about an orchid I'm not even addressing. I'm feeling confident about this one now and already my mind is racing towards the next one. Okay, now we can be a little bit more aggressive. Everything is covered. Doesn't mean we just go in with the big boulders. We'll just work around the perimeter and fill her up just for aesthetic purposes. Moment of truth, let's drain her. Oh, I think this is gonna be so much better long-term and fingers crossed that we do not have to address this orchid except watch her grow and then one day bloom together with Kaltskiana 2.0. It's nice to have two orchids and both of them are still in the collection because normally a 2.0 in my collection means it's a replacement. So <laughs> this is my Kaltskiana OG and then there's 2.0 who's way ahead of her development in comparison to this one. We are done. Now, let's see what Repestris has in store for us. Three cheers for my Kautskiana. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Give her something to grow towards. <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel. It's a massive support when it comes to helping a channel grow. Okay, Repestris. 2019. I'm going to show you some footage because this one's been languishing from jump. The fact she's still around, I think that is one heck of a tenacious orchid. I am ever so grateful. She's a fighter. 
I'm a fighter, we make a great team. Because the growth that she has grown with me, I don't see that the roots were very happy. And then I've got a growth that couldn't really open a leaf. Turns out it was bifoliate, all part and parcel of a stressed orchid. Doesn't know whether it's coming or going. So those leaves never really opened. Then she started another new growth which promptly failed. Oh my goodness, my heart sank when that happened. Now she's growing another new growth to compensate and the base has not scarred up or anything like that. And there's root nubbins and all that fun stuff that I've been dying to see. And for that reason, she's going into a nicer pot none of this recycled stuff. Oh my goodness, I hope she enjoys the graduation and rewards us with some strength, vigor, and eventually blooms. What I didn't want to do was remove the support. <laughs> I thought that was pretty handy, but it is so loose by now, it looks a little ridiculous. So <laughs> here we go, support off. Anything that could impede any kind of <laughs> ripping the orchid, <clears throat> it's got to go. And seeing as the beautiful root tips are on this side, we are going to go and make sure we keep them in our sights and <laughs> reverse the procedure of what we did years ago. Meanwhile, 2019, I didn't have a channel yet. So now you can see what I was doing back then. And I have stuck with the concept throughout. And now I am adapting as per weather conditions, climate, taking the risk factor out. I may have a super dry summer again next year, but at least I am in control of the watering and not freaked out when the humidity is so high that my ripiculous lalias are drowning. You see, while they do like their water when they're growing, they don't like to be in standing water, which is kind of counterproductive because I'm growing them in a semi-hydroponic setup. However, using lava rock, at least there is humidity and dampness around the roots. They can have access to it in the reservoir when needed, but I can also let the pots dry out but not if there's a lot of humidity in the air. If that makes sense, then nothing's gonna dry out. Not even me after a shower. I don't dry out either. While I really love those conditions, whoa, my little lalias, not so much. Oop. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you see? If it wasn't really clear in the B-roll footage, this little new growth, I was hoping it would progress, but when the bracts start to go brown like this, yeah, that's not always a good sign. So look at this. One more time before we just leave her alone. You see what I mean by not a generous root grower, but she's tenacious. She is tenacious. She's not quitting and neither am I. And this is her new home. <laughs> And medium lava rock is what I'm going to put in for her feet. Now, hang on a second. I need that support. And I want her in the middle. So I have to see where to put the wire. Okay, by that water droplet. How convenient. You have no idea how I'm keeping that water droplet in my sights. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was super convenient. <laughs> And now I'm telling myself, oh well, whoops, maybe not so much, let's get it down a bit. And now I'm telling myself, stop shaking. Stop shaking. As in, you know, stop shaking. We've done this so many times. This is not new. <clears throat> I had to go off camera to do this. There was no way. So I wired the back bulb. And even though I don't like to do this, I wired the back leaf as well. Now I'm just pushing her down very, very slowly to the final height that I want her. We'll put her direction of growth towards the holes and we'll try to fill up from the back, hopefully not messing up this new growth here. So we'll fill up with media from the back here. No need for water in this instance, just a steady hand and a close eye on that new growth. Okay, Whew. the support is holding her up. <laughs> Whew. I am ever so grateful for my third hand. 
Back in the day when I was starting with Rapiculus lelius, because of my super dry climate, I actually put sand on the top, on the surface of my media, just so that there would be even more water retention. So you can see how important it is in culture to keep an eye out for your conditions and not just rely on what you know to be true. Now, in a controlled environment, of course, that doesn't apply. But maybe that was a nice little pointer for somebody like me who doesn't have a controlled environment and has to be vigilant. Complacency is not a word that fits into the orchid hobby. And unfortunately, I have had too much of that this season. I'm crazy like a fool. <laughs> building everything around that one root. And one more little detail. I don't want those roots to crawl over the lava rock. So I am actually going to remove the pieces I put there just so that there is a hollow and the other ones hopefully will follow suit and go down. If they do what I'm hoping they will do, great because then I can fill that up again with a piece of lava rock. If not, at least I was aware of it and it's a small little detail but it can make a huge difference when it comes to an orchid that just doesn't want to grow roots. You see why I can now confirm that this here is a Kautskiana because here is the 2.0. When I saw this one come out of the box, I was like, are you kidding me? Who are you? I have never seen such a huge Rapiculus Lelia. But then, of course, I had my doubts about this one that had, well, the bulb in the back was lost, but it only had like little structures. So I'm like, okay, mystery Rapiculus Lelia, we'll see what you're going to do. And this is what she's done. And yay! <laughs> I just thought I would bring you the 2.0 to show you what I meant. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I hope you have been seeing the thumbnails. Check out my playlist called Lelia Lookbook. They're all in there. And while everybody says, pot your Rapiculus Lelias up in small pots because they like a tight space you can see how big my pots are because I go by what the root system gives me so that I don't have to be repotting them every two or three years. My plan is if I can get away with it eight to ten years of Aurelia in her pot which would mean that one day this one will be bulging out of her pot which is exactly the point and what a wonderful time it will be to be able to do that. <laughs> Personally, oh, I don't like disturbing Rapiculus lelius. So that is why they are in pots that would look far too big for them and goes against any grain of what the experts say about Rapiculus lelius. And as you can see with the little one here, her pot could even be another two sizes smaller, but I want her root system once it's going into the pot to stay in the pot and not have to do this again in two years with her as well. The pot is far too big for her stingy root growth, <laughs> but it's fine by me. <laughs> Just live. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. I appreciate your time so, so much. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope there were some tips in there that made you think that you can possibly apply in your own collection and any questions, the comments are there for a reason. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.